My name is Jordan Davies. I'm a PGY4 in the Department of Neurosurgery at the University of California in Irvine. And I'd like to introduce you to our case series of using an automated irrigating drainage system for chronic subdural hematoma. Introduction into chronic subdural hematoma, it may become the most common intracranial neurosurgical condition by 2030. Options have typically been surgical with craniotomy, but middle meningeal artery embolization is gaining traction as well. Recurrence rates have been an issue, anywhere from 5 to 15 percent, but inclusion of a drain has shown to decrease recurrence. Drains do come with issues, though. They can be placed in the wrong uh, location, sometimes into the parenchyma. They obstruct, uh, leaving incomplete evacuation. And we trialed a new automated irrigating drainage subdural catheter to have a goal of decreasing this. The drain consists of a dual lumen catheter, one for irrigation and one for drainage. You can set irrigation at nearly any rate, and uh, at set time intervals, there will be 0.5 or 1 milliliter boluses with drainage between the boluses. There's constant ICP monitoring, and you can set values that the drainage or the irrigation automatically shuts off if it goes above a certain level. The idea of this is to promote washout of inflammatory meters that can uh, promote recurrence to aid in brain re-expansion by removing residual subdural fluid and pneumocephalus to decrease obstruction of the drain and ultimately to decrease recurrence. Here's a look at some of our patient demographics. So usually older, all male, um, average age was about 80. Drain settings can be anywhere from you know, zero to 100. We became a little more aggressive as we got familiar with it. The preoperative subdural was uh, usually quite large, about 26 on average. I included the post-op to see what was evacuated with just surgery and then discharge subdural as an idea of what the drain may have helped in evacuation. Here's a graphical representation of that subdural size in all of our patients from pre-op to follow-up. You see a good decrease in the size, especially in the uh, patients that follow-up, showing that we had good removal of the subdural fluid and uh, low recurrence rate. We had very positive results with the length of stay postoperatively of 2.67 days. Patients spent 1.83 days in the ICU. Because the drain is a subdural drain and is irrigating, we chose to keep patients in the ICU as long as the drain was in place. There were no issues with catheter malposition or occlusion. Um, no perioperative morbidity, meaning no surgical infection, seizures, or hemorrhage following the case. And to date, we've had no subdural recurrence. I'll leave you with some images of a bilateral subdural case where we use this catheter. Within 56 hours, you see good re-expansion of the brain and removal of postoperative pneumocephalus and residual hematoma. Thank you for your time and your attention.